It's the peak of Lyme disease season, and now a scientific breakthrough has been made in Canada. University of Calgary researchers have created high-resolution 3D images of the bacterium that causes Lyme disease. Until now, scientists have been unclear how these bacteria move from the blood to tissues in the body. With more, we're joined by University of Calgary professor, Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology and Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, George Chaconis. Good to see you. Good morning. Mr. Chagones, explain to me what exactly the, the discovery is in terms of tracking um, this bacteria. Well, it's really, to a large extent, a technological advance. Um, if I can paint a picture for you, studying the Lyme disease spirochete in your blood vessels um, is something akin to looking at a spider in a garden hose. Once you turn on the water in that garden hose, the spider is just going to fly through there in all sorts of directions at terrific speed. And studying a spirochete in the blood vessels is actually very similar when your blood is pumping away. That spirochete is being pulled and pushed in all sorts of directions. And um, no one has ever been able to actually observe the spirochete under those conditions before. So what we're looking at is uh, images of almost you know, fluorescent tracking. So what we're talking about is looking at the transportation. What can we learn from that tracking in terms of its speed and where it goes and, and what actually makes people sick with Lyme disease? Right. Well, first of all, in order to get sick from Lyme disease, that bug needs to get into your blood system and it needs to be transported throughout the body and then it needs to escape from the blood vessels into various organ systems in the body. And exactly how that occurs is really unknown. Now, for the first time, we can begin to get a handle on that. Um, what needs to happen is, as that spider rushes through the garden hose, the spirochete and the blood vessels, the first thing that needs to happen is the spirochete needs to grab onto the blood vessel so it stops its movement it then needs to become a little bit more intimately associated with the blood vessel and begin to make its way through and out the other side. And we can now begin to study well, what's involved in that, what the spirochete needs, what it uses from the blood vessels, and begin to unravel that process. And when you unravel that process, and I guess really that mystery, would it lead perhaps to better treatment? Well, perhaps um, one thing it might lead to is a way to stop dissemination of the bug throughout the body. Um, and of course, when we're doing experiments of this nature, you never really know what it leads to. Um, we do it because if we understand better how the organism works, we have a better um, way in which we can possibly stop it. And given that this is kind of the peak of Lyme season or just upon us, it, you know, Lyme disease includes it, the symptoms, uh, you know, a rash near where the, uh, the tick bites, fatigue, chills, maybe fever, this kind of thing. What's the best way to prevent getting Lyme disease? The best way is to know whether you're in an area where Lyme ticks exist. Um, if so, to take precautions, tuck your pants into your socks, wear light colored clothing and use um, insect repellents with DEET and then to check yourself for, mm -hmm. for ticks after going out um, in the out of doors. Makes those, sense. Ticks need, those ticks need to remain attached for about 48 hours before they can transmit the disease. Okay. So you have ample time in which to get rid of them. Professor Chaconis, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.